Hello everybody, it's your old pal Tuna here and welcome back to another video. Today, we're doing a studio vlog. Behind me here, this is my studio. This is my corner of the apartment that is just for me where I get to do all my work and I spend mm, 12 to 14 hours a day. If you're new here, I am Tuna. I'm a full-time freelance illustrator. I do all kinds of things. Mainly, I do freelance commission and contract work, I do graphic novels and comics, and I run a Patreon. This is my second studio vlog. If you are a longtime watcher <laughs> of my channel, three years ago, I put out a studio vlog in an old space, in an old time, in an old place, and you may have noticed things have changed since then. I've been in this current space for about six months, so it's still a little bit of a work in progress in terms of getting it to a fully functional workstation for me, but it's the first time that I've had enough space and what feels like it's actually my space, so I don't know, it's really special to me. As I mentioned, I'm an illustrator, so that's kind of the journey I'm gonna be taking you on. So this has been two weeks or so of my life that I've like, I mean, the thing is, is with anything new that we try in our life, you're not gonna be good at it the first time. And if you go back and watch my old vlog, you're gonna be like, yeah, damn right you're not good at it the first time. A little bit better the second time around, I think. I've always felt that what I do is too boring to actually record and share, because like I say, I sit at my desk in front of my computer or my iPad and I just move my wrist around. But I don't remember who said it exactly, but there was something along the lines of like, when you're approaching sharing who you are, no one does things exactly the same way that you do. And so what's boring to you could be like really interesting to other people. So I'm gonna take you on this journey. Hopefully you're gonna find it really interesting and not really boring. And thank you for putting up with all the bumps and creases while I get this whole like vlogging thing worked out. It was a really interesting challenge to integrate the camera and the filming into my day-to-day -day life, but I've had a lot of fun. I hope that comes through in the footage that you're going to see. I hope you enjoy this video. I hope you learn a little bit. I hope it inspires you to like, pick up a pencil and draw something, because honestly, that's the most important thing to me is being able to inspire other people to follow their dreams because I get to live my dream and that's pretty cool. So hopefully you can enjoy the ride with me. One of the reasons that I've elected to start filming as of today is that my to-do list is relatively calm this week, which is a nice change of pace. Yesterday, I actually had what I would call the most relaxing day that I've had in like the last two months. And I did a ton of work yesterday, but somehow it was super relaxing. I have one more major task that I need to complete and that is putting together the lunch boxes for my sticker club members over on Patreon. I do that within the first two weeks of every month, pack that up and ship those off. And I used to do this task differently where I would designate like one or two days in a week to work the whole day and pack everything, write all the notes, stick all the labels on, put all the postage on, and bring everything to the post office. But as of this year, I've been trying something new where I like break up the task into different days, which is very, very much better. <laughs> so I can sit down and like steal 30 minutes here or an hour there to uh, start packing or sticking labels on, or for example, I have um, all of the sticker sheets already inside of the envelopes ready to be, and all the envelopes are labeled, so all I have to do now is take one of my notes, write the recipient's name, write my name, <laughs> pack everything up, um, and then once all the notes are in, I am going to leave the final task of sealing the envelopes, uh, which I used to have these like peel and stick envelopes, but I switched to custom printed envelopes, which are very cute, I must say myself. And the only problem with those is that they are like a lick envelope, an adhesive envelope, a water activated adhesive envelope. So instead of licking them because that's gross, I have to use a sponge and wet. So that'll be the second step of this task. But I'd really like to get this done today. Uh, it is the uh, 11th of March and I like to get everything shipped by the 14th so that people will receive them within like a reasonable time um, I'm a little bit behind from where I like ideally I could get them all out by like the 7th but sometimes the schedule just calls for a little extension so uh, most of the in fact I think all of the international packages are already packed and shipped 
but what I have left here is all the US and Canada packages. So yeah, let's let's get packaging, shall we? not completely done with what I have to do for the lunchbox club this week but I'm gonna take a break now cuz I ran out of big lunch rewards which is these cute little let me grab one for you and I will show you cute little paper dolls that I have handmade with um, brads and paper cutouts so cute but I have to make them all <laughs> and I'd only made I think about half of what I need so now I have to take a little break, probably eat something, and then I am going to make more friends to pack inside the big lunch boxes. So I'm very excited for spring because my hair suffers from extreme hat hair as I'm wearing my toque like 90% of the time during fall and winter. And then when I do take it off, I've got the flattest hair known to man. Anyway, let's make some friends. All right, welcome to the first official disembodied voice segment of the video. <laughs> I actually forgot that I was filming when I was eating this sandwich and I was like, mm, I'll just leave it in. It's fine, I said I was gonna have a snack, so here's proof right here. The cat in the background here is insisting on interrupting me and is probably frustrated by the fact that I'm talking, but not to him. 
but I really wanted to record this voiceover and talk to you a little bit about what it is that I'm doing here, uh, making these friends, as I've been calling them. Uh, one of the awesome things about the Lunchbox Club that I run is that I offer prints, stickers, and I have like a personal challenge to myself to offer something else, quote. <laughs> and this month, uh, while I was doing my research, my original idea was to do more of a um, paper cutout style doll where you have like a little figure and then you have all the pieces of clothing and you cut it all out and then you kind of fold the tabs over and you dress up the figure in the paper clothes. I have a bit of a fascination of that sort of thing. Uh, like it goes back to when I was a kid and I would read Archie comics and they'd have those Katie Keene stories in the Archie comics and sometimes at the end there'd be like a Katie Keene fashion doll kind of I don't think I ever cut one out because they were too precious but anyway I digress so I was looking at doing something like that and in my research I stumbled upon these articulated dolls and I have never like I've never really seen these before before I know that it's kind of an old school way to make a toy um, but I, it never crossed my mind to make them. And so when I found them, I was like, this is a great idea. I did some research. I found these tiny little brads, as they're called, on Etsy from a local seller. And I picked up, I think it was like, I had 50 that I needed to do. And each little doll needed 10. So I bought 500 <laughs> little tiny metal brads to put these guys together. And the way that I made them is I designed them in Clip Studio Paint, um, I designed them to have bleed so that when I use my Cricut machine to cut out each piece, the Cricut alignment didn't have to be terribly precise uh, because with the bleed, like it could kind of cut out and wiggle a little bit back and forth one way or the other and still be clean. I hope that makes sense. Uh, but yeah, I loved trying this out. As you can see from the footage, I like it took a really long time to put each one together i think it was about five minutes timed per doll i have to first take my little push pin and pierce all of the x marks that i created that would be where the joints would be and i um i proofed it all when i was creating it digitally just to make sure that i wasn't gonna run into any issues when it came to actually constructing the toy um, but first I had to prick all of these holes, and there are more than 10 holes. I don't know, there's like 15, 16, 20, something like that. And then I, after that, would take all the brads, stick them into each of the holes, then stick the pieces into the holes to connect them to the main body part, and then I would peel them back. You can see me doing, thank goodness my nails were just a little bit long so I could like actually peel the things back. And yeah, uh, five minutes 50 things that's 20 250 minutes which is however many hours <laughs> but totally worthwhile um as i'll mention coming up these are a lot of fun to make and i look forward to trying something different yet a little less time consuming for my next creative uh big lunchbox endeavor <laughs> but aren't they cute come on they're so cute it was worth it It is the next day now. Welcome to tomorrow. Uh, last, yesterday, last night, left you off while I was making some friends. That did end up taking me basically the entire evening. Um, I had 28 to make. There was a total of 40, 48, 45, somewhere between 45 and 48. I'd already made a bunch of them, packed them up, sent some of them already, had some left over for packing, had to make more, took forever. Uh, really fun. Glad I don't have to make any more of those. I do have a bunch of those tiny little metal brads left over, so I'm thinking of doing some, like, just some stuff kind of for fun for me rather than making 50 and having to mail them out to all my patrons. I spent a little bit of time putting the rest into their envelopes, so that's all finished, and now I just have to affix the postage and send them off, and then I'll be done, which is exactly what I was hoping for. Obviously, the post office is not open today. It is Sunday, so I can get that done and ship them off tomorrow. So it's actually almost two now on Sunday. I had brunch this morning with my friends, which was super fun, but it is technically a work day or at least it's like a work afternoon for me. I have three tasks in prioritization order 
The first one is getting those stamps on the envelopes. The second one is getting pencils done for one of the graphic novels that I'm working on. Um, this one is in the pencils phase. I am over halfway done. I need to be finished by the end of this month-ish. So I need to work on those. That's very important. I have a weekly kind of check-in deadline on Tuesdays where I send all the work that I've done during the week. And the last three weeks I've been like kind of just doing a handful here and there because I've had like other stuff going on and it's just a little bit overwhelming to do a lot of pencils in a week. So I want to get as many pencils done as I possibly can. A minimum of five would be great, but if I can get like eight done, that'd be really cool. It's a little bit that's a little bit generous of an estimation, but we'll see. And then the last thing that I have to work on, this is something that's like kind of low priority, so I could like moved it around a lot on my to-do list, is I have um, a blog, I guess, that uh, reached out. They do a lot, they, they publish comics and they do a lot of collaborations with people and they were like, hey, if you want to send in a pitch um, to submit to our website, like, please feel welcome to. Um, and... I would like to work with them. They sent me the same email a few years ago actually and I like kind of just missed it or I just didn't really follow up and I was busy. I was working on another graphic novel at the time. But they reached back out and it's like a pay it's paid work <laughs> and I get to kind of like write it and illustrate it myself. So I thought it'd be fun to follow up and I want to get some pitch ideas down for that. So that is not any drawing that I'll have to do. It's just like coming up with some concepts. Uh, but again, low priority, much more important that I get these pencils done and get these packages ready to fly tomorrow to their lovely, lovely recipients. Let's, let's jump into the work day. <laughs>
Hello everybody. It is Sunday, March 20th. It's the first day of spring and I'm checking back in on the vlog. It's been almost a week <laughs> since I recorded any footage. It's been over a week since I actually talked to the camera. Uh, thing is, this week was like one of those weeks where you just don't really want to be perceived. I don't know if you can relate. So the camera does a lot of perceiving and I decided that I just had to focus on getting work done and picking the vlog back up back like when I felt like I had the energy to. One of the big things that like keeps me from making video content is I often, I'm very like introverted and I often don't feel like expressing myself or being on film or you know whatever it is that's required to make a video. But I am turning over a new leaf and even though it has been a week since I filmed there's there's more work days ahead of me so you know we'll just record from now on. I'll let you know a little bit about what I did this past week. Uh, Mondays and tu Tuesdays and half of Wednesdays, for the past two months I've been doing this like contract work where I basically work on totally NDA, totally doesn't have anything to do with my own personal work, freelance. Uh, it's really fun actually, it's like very low stress and the company that I work for is awesome. So I really have been enjoying doing that but it does take up 20 hours of my week every week and as a result I tend to work kind of closer to 60 hours um, and I'm really burnt out all the time so that is coming to a close this coming week is the last week that I will be doing that contract work uh, which is also a good reason to start vlogging more because I'll have like all seven days of the week is just me working on like my stuff which is cool. <laughs> Aside from that I've been mostly working on uh, pencils which you guys saw me do in the cafe. In some of the earlier clips you saw me packing up the February lunchbox club which was the corvids and clothes theme and the theme for March is a uh, cryptid seeker society so it's like cryptids and stuff like that. I try to balance out the workload so there's a little bit that I have to do for each month in the previous month and then I try to like finish everything up by mid-month of the current month and then what I'll do is I'll kind of release the rewards throughout the month to kind of pace it out and keep people interested. <laughs> so yeah, I was supposed to do a live stream um, yesterday on Saturday to finish up the final reward which was a print but the problem is, is that I got kind of locked out of Patreon and I have to wait until Monday for their customer service team to come back online so I can like get back in there. So I postponed that to next weekend, that'll be fun. Um, but I did have to finish the print, so I'll, I'll show that to you here. Woo. Pretty happy with how that came out. Tried some new stuff, which is always cool. So I'll be sending that off to the print shop. Same with the um, other print-related reward for the Big Lunch Club, which is here. Woo. I spent some time taking glamour shots of everything to make sure that I had posts for Instagram. And I don't know if anyone else has noticed this. Uh, this is something I've noticed over the years when it comes to social media is not all content is created equal, not all content works on all platforms. And almost universally, nicer photos work well on Instagram, but if I use those nice photos on Twitter, they don't get as much traction. And I almost think that it's like on Twitter people are more wary of things that don't seem authentic, question mark. So like, if I post a picture that's, you know, more of just a photo of my sketchbook sitting on my desk with no staging, that's going to do better than if I take a staged photo of that same sketchbook page. But that staged photo is going to not only look a lot nicer on my Instagram feed, but it will get better engagement on Instagram too. I don't know if you guys have noticed this. I spent a lot of time thinking about social media because I've been on it for so long and I've watched it change and evolve. And like, I've watched my presence change and evolve. I've watched like the algorithm change and evolve. But anyway, all of that aside, the first thing that I wanted to do today, so it's it's Sunday and uh, I, I mean it's a work day for me really. I work six to seven days a week most of the time, but I have been craving a little bit of personal creative time. So uh, one of the things that I like doing with my own kind of practice is working with acrylic gouache. If you've seen any of my other videos, a lot of my videos feature acrylic gouache. Um, it's the most interesting medium that I use because like most of the other work that I do is digital but I don't get a lot of time to work with acrylic gouache unless I make that time. So I always make time with my lunchbox club, my big lunch club. There's always a gouache print that goes out with those so I make that day to do those the illustration for, for those prints. And sometimes that's like the only painting that I do in a month and it's really hard to practice when you don't have time to do 
paintings ever. Another thing that I was doing this week was flipping through some of my old sketchbooks and this was totally impromptu. I was comparing uh, every month I do a sketchbook flip through for my snack pack patrons and I it dawned on me that this is the five year anniversary of me doing those sketchbook flip throughs so I went back to look through some of my old sketchbooks which I honestly there's nothing like a sketchbook like I, I sell a lot of my original art uh, but sketchbooks are so precious to me and they reflect like not only a time and a place and a technique but like who I kind of was when I was working in the sketchbooks. So I was flipping through those kind of looking for ideas that I could steal from myself and just sort of reflecting on all the emotions that come up when you, you know, look at the past. <laughs> but I found this illustration that is actually the first piece that I did with acrylic wash. And I kind of vaguely remember working on this. I remember that I had no idea what I was doing. I was kind of rushing. I wasn't really trying. I was just sort of sticking the paintbrush in the paint and and seeing what would happen but I thought it would be really fun if I took that painting and I redid it in my current style and I just like I try harded you know like I was like I'm really gonna one-up myself from five years ago but of course to do this uh, this is like a total a vanity you know just for fun kind of illustration so it's not gonna happen if I don't make time for it do I have time today not really am I gonna do it anyway yes my partner is at work so I will be on my own until nighttime, which means lots of time for me to work.
Uh, it's nearly 10 o'clock now. I finished the painting probably about an hour ago. I've been like cleaning up some of the clips that I took and just tidying up after myself painting and looking at the painting and making sure that it's actually done. <laughs> Super fun. Thanks for watching. Uh, I didn't take that many clips of me actually doing the painting because obviously it's 10 o'clock, which means it's been like dark out for hours. <laughs> the other reason is that I record clips on my phone to make a reel. So I have like close up painting clips there, and then kind of the more like zoomed out aesthetic stuff for the vlog. So do you wanna see the reel that I made? <laughs> Here you go. Here's the final painting, by the way. I don't know if the camera will focus on this because I don't know if the camera is focusing on anything right now. But yeah, I uh, finished this up. Took about six hours total, I would say, give or take. I didn't have like um, a timer running and I took two breaks to eat. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, as I mentioned, it's acrylic gouache. It is, I decided to go with 100% acrylic gouache because I wanted it to mirror the like before picture that I obviously did. Something that I've been trying to do more is multimedia in my physical media pieces. I love acrylic gouache and I think that like ultimately it has just the most beautiful effect, but I think pairing it with stuff like colored pencils or pencil crayons, if you're nasty, watercolor and ink wash and I mean, pastels sound cool. I don't have any oil pastels, but I'd love to try them. They look really cool textured. And then something else that's cool that I got recently for like a different project that I will hopefully be documenting some of the process of making is an airbrush and I um, like all good millennials have something of a fascination with the 1980s so I've been looking to that illustration era and so I really want to for, find time first of all to learn how to use the airbrush and then be able to implement that into my paintings as well. Unsurprisingly it took me the entire day to finish the painting so that's it for me on the old to-do list. I'll pick up what I missed out on doing tomorrow, but tomorrow is Monday, so it is the beginning of my two and a half day contract work thing that I'm doing. It's the last, 
the last week that I have to do that, which is cool. So I'll see what else I can vlog over the next few days and hopefully wrap things up. One of the things that I really want to include is, um, as well as being an artist, obviously, one of my greatest passions in this world is cooking and something that I get a lot of requests for on Instagram um, when I post photos of the food that I make, people really want to know recipes. So I started this like blog thing on my Patreon where it's not behind a paywall, but I just use it as a place where I can post recipes and it gives me a chance to like do food illustrations as well because that's something I'm interested in doing, obviously combining the two things that I really like. <laughs> but until then, now is the end of my day. I'm gonna go take a shower, get my makeup off, put my PJs on. I put up a Q&A on Instagram after I finish the painting, so we'll see if people have cues for me to A, and I will spend the rest of my evening doing that, chilling out, and we will see you tomorrow. Today I am making pasta putinesca, which is a super delicious pasta dish, tomato-based sauce with anchovies, capers, olives, all kinds of salty deliciousness like that. Um, I don't think that I will be using this time during the video to actually give you guys a recipe because this is a dish that I kind of make without a recipe. It's one of my favorites, so I've made it quite a few times, and I think that the history of the dish is that it is kind of a use up what's left in the refrigerator sort of meal. I would say I split my time between using a recipe and not using a recipe basically 50-50. If I'm trying something totally new, I do tend to lean on some sort of source. Usually what I'll do is start with an idea and then go to Pinterest or Google and be like, I want to have pork with pineapple, like what are some dishes I could make with those? And then I find something to either inspire me or to completely follow. Every once in a while I'll completely follow a recipe, but usually it's more of a guideline. Once I've made a dish once or twice, I feel pretty confident and I can go ahead and sort of do it my way and make some changes and kind of write my own recipe, but I almost never document it and it like feels natural not to document it for me because eating and food, it's sort of a transient experience. You have to like be there in the moment of it being made and then being eaten, but people want me to share that experience with them and I love cooking. It makes me feel super relaxed. I would say that the cooking part of the experience of eating is like at least 50% of the pleasure for me, the other 50% coming from stuffing my face full of whatever del delicious food that I made. Uh, but I want to be able to share that passion and encourage people to find joy in the kitchen. I've joked about this before, but mostly with my personal friends. The thing that like taught me how to cook, aside from, you know, Growing up, my mom taught me some tips and tricks and techniques, but otherwise, I really used to love the TV show Chopped on Food Network, and the whole premise of that show is that you take ingredients that maybe shouldn't naturally fit together and you find ways to make it work. And through doing that, I found ways to like combine flavors and learn technique and make stuff from what's in my fridge. So that's why I don't really work with a recipe generally, um, but yeah, I hope that this is kind of interesting. We'll try the food thing a little differently next time, but enjoy these clips for now. <laughs> All right, everybody, thank you for watching my vlog today. I hope it was too long because I love me a too long vlog, not gonna lie. I would really, really, really like to hear what you think, so please drop me a comment below. Even if you wanna bully me, you know, I don't mind. I've been on the internet for a long time. I can handle a few punches. But if you don't wanna bully me, you can find me all across the internet. I'll leave my links below. I'm on Instagram, I'm on Twitter, I'm on TikTok, and I'm on Patreon. And speaking of Patreon, big shout outs to my snack pack. You saw me putting together content for them. That's a large part of what I've been doing these past two weeks. It's one of my favorite things about my job and the fact that they're there and they're supporting me is like a dream come true. I'm not really sure what the algorithm here wants you to do these days. I don't know if you should like, like, or subscribe. You can do those things if you want to. No pressure for me. <laughs> but I'll see you in the next video. And in the meantime, keep being awesome. <sighs> Hopefully that didn't suck too much. Only time will tell.